For several years, the Albanian organized crime syndicates have been on a relentless rise in the European underworld. Initially known for their involvement in classic prostitution activities, these criminal enterprises have since made a transition into more sophisticated and complex criminal operations. However, it's the drug trade that has propelled them up the ladder of organized crime, particularly in Europe, where they have firmly entrenched themselves. The centerpiece of their criminal empire is the Bella Group's cocaine supply chain, a network that Europol has identified as one of the most active and prolific organizations in the illicit cocaine trafficking trade. The question is, what's the secret to their success and expansion? The answer lies in geography. Albania's strategic location places it at the crossroads of the drug trade. Heroin, which often originates in Afghanistan, embarks on a journey through Turkey before finally reaching Albania. It's here that the heroin undergoes a crucial transformation, with its purity reduced to increase profits. The control of key routes in the Balkan region and dominance over the Adriatic Sea provides them with an efficient distribution network that resembles a highway for narcotics. The prices for these drugs vary depending on their final destination, making it a lucrative venture. But that's not the end of their portfolio. Within the same network, they are also heavily involved in the trafficking of cannabis. According to Italy's anti-mafia division, Albania stands as the primary source of cannabis in Europe. The rapid growth of the cannabis industry in the early 2000s led to an overflow of cannabis in parts of Europe. Dramatic shootouts in what's known as Albania's cannabis kingdom and the seizure of massive quantities of the drug highlighted the extent of this illicit trade. At its peak, it accounted for nearly a third of Albania's GDP. As the Albanian government pledged to tackle the expansion of cannabis production, a battle for normalcy and law and order ensued. Law enforcement authorities embarked on operations to eradicate cannabis plant cultivation in 2016. However, by 2019, a resurgence of production was observed. Criminal organizations adapted by establishing indoor cannabis farms closer to the lucrative Italian market. What's noteworthy is the growing collaboration between Albanian-speaking criminal groups and Italian mafias, resulting in a formidable partnership in drug trafficking. Their geographical proximity played a pivotal role in fostering this unholy alliance, with some Albanian migrants being drawn into Italy's criminal underworld. But the story doesn't stop there. Albanian criminal syndicates set their sights on the highly profitable cocaine trade. Over the past two decades, they made a significant entry into this lucrative business. Some members even relocated to South America, partly as a favor to Italian contacts who had strong ties with South American drug cartels. These Albanian-speaking criminals were contracted by the Italian Mafia and other criminal networks to transport cocaine from South American ports across the continent and distribute it in the streets of major European capitals. Ecuador emerged as a key location, where Albanians were involved in the banana trade, using it as a clever cover to smuggle cocaine in shipments from Colombia. The situation in Colombia added a new dimension to the story. A no vote to a peace deal resulted in the emergence of new armed groups, all vying for control of the lucrative drug trade. This marked the turning point when Albanian-speaking criminal networks began to operate on the global stage. Their accumulated experience and connections allowed them to establish a significant presence in South America and establish partnerships to distribute cocaine throughout Europe. In essence, Ecuador became a melting pot of foreign traffickers, including Albanians and even Chinese syndicates, all working to secure their share of the illicit drug trade and distribute narcotics to their respective countries. The Albanian-speaking criminal organizations had learned valuable lessons from Italian mafias, and their journey from supplying Italy to becoming influential players in international cocaine trafficking is a testament to their adaptability and tenacity in the world of organized crime. In the shadowy realm of organized crime, a complex tapestry of alliances and power dynamics was at play. It was a time when the eradication of aerial plantations faced political obstacles, and peasant farmers continued cultivating coca due to a dearth of alternatives offered by the government. Amid this backdrop, the Colombian cocaine production witnessed a meteoric rise in 2016. This surge would not only redefine the dynamics of the global drug trade but also set the stage for the Albanian Mafia's ascendancy. While authorities grappled with decisions to halt the eradication of aerial plantations, small-time farmers persisted in their cultivation practices, their livelihoods intertwined with the illicit trade. Between 2013 and 2019, Colombia's cocaine production experienced an unprecedented fourfold increase. 
This surge in production paralleled a growing demand for efficient trafficking routes to Europe, a market that hungered for the white powder. In this rapidly evolving landscape, the Italian mafia, particularly the formidable Ndrangheta, emerged as dominant players. These criminal behemoths seized control of a staggering 80% of the cocaine destined for European shores, a fact underscored by Italian prosecutor Nicola Grattery. Yet, the sheer volume of cocaine produced in Colombia became too overwhelming for these criminal giants to manage single-handedly. Colombian suppliers began scouring the criminal underworld for additional partners, and among them, the Albanian syndicates stood out as strategically positioned players. The Albanian Mafia, once perceived as a support system for the Italian Mafia, had undergone a transformation, evolving into a formidable force with the capability to run its own intricate supply chain across Europe. They now masterminded every facet of the drug trade, from orchestrating massive shipments directly from Latin America to the meticulous orchestration of street-level distribution throughout the continent. One entity exemplified this remarkable evolution, Compania Bello. This conglomerate comprised a dozen Albanian criminal organizations, each benefiting from privileged connections with South American cocaine producers. Compania Bello served as the linchpin that facilitated the import and distribution of vast quantities of drugs from South America. Their well-oiled operation saw cocaine flow through Dutch and Belgian ports, a crucial conduit in their expansive network. Remarkably, even from his Ecuadorian prison cell, Britain Regipi coordinated a highly sophisticated transnational operation that controlled the relentless flow of cocaine from South America to Europe. It was worth noting that Regipi himself faced allegations of a double murder in Albania and an audacious armed robbery in Belgium, which had landed him behind bars in a prison in Merksplaw, Belgium. However, it quickly became apparent that the prison system in Belgium was ill-equipped to detain criminals of Regipi's caliber. Consequently, he executed a daring escape in 2014. His newfound freedom was short-lived, though, as he eventually found himself ensnared in Ecuador facing charges of drug trafficking. His affiliation with Albanian-speaking criminal groups had thrust him into the heart of one of Europe's most active criminal networks. Campania Bello functioned as a transnational criminal federation with a singular objective, to maximize profits for each of its members. For example, Aldi Drizdari's Albanian gangs, stationed in Rotterdam and Antwerp, assumed the role of intermediaries, receiving the cocaine and overseeing its distribution. A similar narrative unfolded with the brothers Gertie and Edmund, who efficiently trafficked cocaine from the Netherlands to various European destinations, including Italy and Germany. Estimates suggested that these two siblings distributed at least 50 kilograms of cocaine every week, resulting in an annual turnover of approximately 70 million euros. The actual figures, however, might have been significantly higher. Yet, in September 2020, a significant blow struck the Albanian criminal syndicate as authorities orchestrated 20 arrests spanning 10 different countries. This extensive five-year-long investigation represented the most significant operation against Albanian-speaking organized crime to date. What set the Albanian mafia apart was its audacious business model, unlike conventional criminal enterprises, which segregated the roles of those responsible for importing and those handling street-level sales. Albanian groups revolutionized the trade by integrating every aspect of the supply chain. They oversaw the entire process, from sourcing drugs to their meticulous distribution. The world witnessed their audacious exploits on social media platforms, where they flaunted vast sums of money, drugs, and extravagant cars. Their rap songs celebrated their criminal lifestyle, not only bolstering their reputation but also enticing impressionable young recruits. However, the emergence of these Albanian criminal groups was paralleled by a surge in violence, particularly in the ruthless enforcement of their dominion over the drug trade. The National Crime Agency report unveiled a startling reality, although Albanian groups constituted a mere 0.8% of organized crime in the UK. Their influence was disproportionately felt in the cocaine market. They wielded significant control in a sector already estimated to be worth over 1 billion euros annually in London alone. Their edge was not just violence, it was economics. Their ability to secure cartel-grade cocaine at significantly lower prices, approximately £5,000 per kilogram compared to competitors paying a staggering £22,500 to Dutch wholesalers, afforded them unparalleled dominance. For their model to thrive indefinitely, control over European ports was paramount. 
the majority of cocaine entering Europe arrived by sea, primarily through major ports like Antwerp and Rotterdam. This necessitated a partnership between the Albanian Mafia and the Ndrangheta, an alliance that extended beyond the underworld to infiltrate the legitimate workforce. It's crucial to highlight that the ports in Belgium and the Netherlands employed over 200,000 individuals, some of whom, knowingly or unknowingly, collaborated with these criminal organizations. Albanian-speaking criminal groups ingeniously utilized Belgium and the Netherlands as launchpads for smuggling cocaine into other European states. It was estimated that approximately 15 criminal groups in the Benelux region had connections with counterparts based in South America. Over two decades, Albanian criminals had morphed from outsiders into dominant distributors in one of the world's most significant drug markets. In the assessment of a former member of the National Crime Agency, the Albanians weren't merely well positioned. Their significance in the European cocaine trade was poised for further expansion. The Albanian Mafia had not only adapted to the changing dynamics of organized crime but had also fundamentally reshaped the rules of engagement, forever altering the landscape of the criminal underworld.